So they say that you should do everything in moderation, right? So too does this rule apply to doing things excessively or going to excess. I think everything should be done in moderation, including excessiveness and being excessive. So what I mean by that is, you know, they say that excess is the path to wisdom and that you don't really learn nearly as much as that as when you go to extremes and you hit rock bottom, you know, or the full length and the full potency of something, of some situation, and you really experience the full brunt force of it, then you are really left with a mark that leaves an impression, leaves you with something to remember, and makes you dwell in it a little bit longer, and you end up getting more from it, you end up appreciating the overall situation more, just because uh, it was a lot more hard hitting. You know what I'm saying? So, I think it's good, you know, in general, everything in moderation works, you know, that you shouldn't go too far one way or the other, it's always, you know, yang, it's always about balance, you know, so it's okay to drink every now and then, it's okay to smoke every now and then, it's even okay to shoot up black tar heroin every now and then, if, 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 it's all done in moderation, you know, but if it just so happens that at some point in your life you end up doing any of these things or something else to excess, whether it be lengthy periods of time or just a lot in consistency or both, I don't think it should be too hard on yourself as long as you learn from it. And at the end of the day, it's another stepping stone that helps lead your way into a better future, into a better destination at the end of it all. The end of it all being, and the destination being your current footstep right now. Because there, I don't believe in destiny. I don't believe in fate. I believe life's what you make of it, depending on the opportunities you take. Depending on every step you take. And destiny's in the footstep, where you are right now. There's no thinking, there's no deliberating, there's no great plan. This is what I am, this is where I am. This is what's happening. And this is destiny. It's about destination, right now. Destination X under my footstep so it doesn't matter what you've done in the past and what steps you've taken those things don't exist anymore unless we're looking at everything from a grand scale outside of the illusion of time but let's just keep things confined to the illusion of time for now just to keep things simple so you know not every step you've taken the part in the past matters if it's not still affecting you now as long as you've learned from that, if you've really pushed something, or you've made some mistakes, or you've had some pretty heavy and dark periods or fucked up periods in your life, don't get into the whole mindset of thinking, well, I fucked it, and this shame or this guilt or this damage that I've done is irreparable and irreprievable. But instead think that, you know, what have I learned from this? What is the wisdom I have gained after these steps of excess? You know what I'm saying? And then you will understand, and I hope you understand, that it's good to do everything in moderation, including going to excess. Because you learn a hell of a lot more and you appreciate a hell of a lot more. And I think that overall helps you appreciate even more so keeping everything moderate. Only doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but not doing anything too much, too consistently. You know, sometimes you need to have too much of something to appreciate having less. You know, sometimes you need to be doing something all the time to appreciate just having one weekend off work, being able to kick back and do nothing at all. And sometimes things need to get really, really complex, convoluted to the point where your head's about to explode for you to really appreciate simplicity and stillness and somethingness, uh, nothingness, I should say. You know, I, I'm just, and this whole idea came to me because I just had some drinks at the, uh, at the Brown Fox um, and had a chat with a, with a friend, Jury, or Yuri, um, and Cassandra Cook's husband-to-be, and congratulations, guys. Mega huge news, and you're both beautiful people. Um, so, sure, sure there'll be happy, happy, happy chapters to come. I'm looking forward to it. Good on you.
Um, and yeah, so I've had a few drinks and I was thinking about what am I, you know, I feel like f f filming something. I just like to film, you know, like I live my life once, you know, I'm, and I'm gonna die and so much time I didn't use, I used just walking around, you know, like apparently there was a, some guy, what's his name, Dr. Brain? There's a documentary on him, he's like a, a graffiti artist. And he had this obsession with filming absolutely everything in his life. Like, he couldn't spend one day without his camera in his hand, you know, capturing everything. Because he felt that ever since his parents died, but, you know, there's so much time in life that you cannot take back, you cannot relive. And so, you know, it's best to capture it all. Even though he didn't actually have time to physically watch what he captured because it was too busy capturing, is the ironic thing. But it was all stored nonetheless for retrieval. Just a pretty chance he wanted to retrieve it. And he ended up hosting his own massive exhibition, exhibiting all his work that he made with this graffiti. And apparently he copied from a lot of people and he did real, he kind of cheated, he didn't really paint the things themselves, but he printed it and did massive like stencilings, massive print ups of things, just with computer editing pictures. Edison Pictures, and he made billions of bucks on it, like, or millions of bucks from this exhibition, and he came from nowhere, you know, and he was inspired by Banksy, and he was helping out Banksy, he was one of the few photographers that Banksy would actually let follow him around and film him, you know, it was privileged, and then after a while, Banksy started getting sick of his, like, oh, I love you, Jesus, kind of, you know, fanatic, um, you know, commitment to being with Banksy every step of the way. So Banksy said to this guy, you know, go off and do your own thing. Do your own thing. Do your own exhibition. And he did. And he made mega bucks. And Banksy got pissed off because he cheated. And it wasn't authentic. He didn't, he didn't go through all the hard, grueling steps that he took and other people in that world and that culture of art um, would take. But the point is, this guy had an obsession with filming everything. I don't really have that same obsession, but I like to capture things here and there, just because it's like, well, why not? You know, there's a little bit of that. That whole, you know, you can't re replace time that's lost. And it's, it's nice just to be able to look back, you know? And it's nice to make every moment count, whether it be something simple, whether it be something complicated, something, you know, in moderation or to excess. As long as it all counts, as long as it all amounts to something, I think that's all that really matters. You know? Even if it's just a drink at the bar, I don't know what it's going to amount to yet, but I'm feeling a little bit more confident. So we'll see how that one plays out. Thank you very much. Bloop! Yeah, yeah.